Okay, so, uh, I'm modding an original Xbox for a friend, and the purpose of modding it is so you can have pretty much any old retro game on your Xbox, um, even Nintendo 64. Shut up, ad. Uh, yeah, you can, the N64 emulator is kind of iffy. Um, every emulator is written specific for Xbox, uh, but anything pre-N64 is pretty darn solid, and it gives you save states, fast-forward capability, um, even if this is just something that you want to do to practice, like, you know, running through a game or anything like that, um, it's really, really awesome. Plus, there's tons of, like, Japanese games and all the stuff that you would never would have even begun to touch. Um, so first thing that you're going to need is, uh, well, an uh, original Xbox. I just bought this one, uh, so it should be pretty much factory default. Um, it's used, obviously, but it, as you can see, it's asking you for the time and everything. Um, the other thing you're going to need is, I use Splinter Cell. Um, it cannot be Game of the Year Edition uh, for a very specific reason. There are three games that this mod works with and it has to do with a, a glitch in the, the save game file. Um, so, if you can, just find Splinter Cell. It's, it's what I have, so it's what I'm going to be demoing with. Remember, not Game of the Year Edition, because they have multiple versions. Um, apart from that, you'll need to get this little trinket called Action Replay for Xbox. Um, I got it off Amazon for like 15 bucks, I think. Uh, it's basically a, uh, it's kind of like a game sharky type thing. You can load in save files and stuff like that. Um, it comes with a memory card, and then it comes with a, a little adapter, USB thing that plugs into, uh, this goes USB into your computer and then this is a little port for the memory card so that you can toss data on there so awesome um, so let me get past these first couple of screens here um, I, I wonder if I'll just set the right time it is 1 12 CST and it is December what? 99 oh I guess this is the year yeah, this looks like the month, and then this is the date. Oh, there we go. So I haven't done this in a while, so wow, it's set to Japanese? Never had that before. Well, <laughs> that might make things a little more difficult. Let me see. Uh... Not 360. Not 360. Ugh. Xbox. Select system? I don't know which one of these is system. Damn it. What's up, Obtuse? I'm gonna have to make guesses here. That, I don't know if this is system. Oh yeah, this looks right. Xbox. Uh, and then we want to go to console settings, which is maybe the picture of the Xbox. No, that's about. Um, sound. Clock. There we go. <laughs> ah, man. Alright. Good. Good, we've got past our first hurdle. Things always got to go right, wrong when it's live, right? Okay, um, so the first thing that you would do, if this is your very first time doing this, is you take the action replay, hook it up to yonder computer, um, and there are a couple of files that you're going to need. Let me, uh, let me see here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Okay. So I'm going to let you look at this website here real quick. Change focus. Because. Oh, God. Whatever. Um, the main thing is if you punch into Google Xbox Soft Mod, you'll probably find everything that I'm doing here. But more importantly, you will find some type of instructions telling you or giving you these soft mod install files um, in this case there uh, you know this link here you would click that and download those and the action replay and the memory card works basically just like a a USB flash drive or something like that so you just plug it in and then it becomes a drive on the computer and you just drop those drop those files onto this nifty little memory card deal and then from that point stick them into your controller um, now what we've got on the controller actually is a fake save file for Splinter Cell um, that is actually linked to run a Linux installer <laughs> which basically is the main part of the hack um, so what you want to do with these files before you launch Splinter Cell is uh, go into the memory card. Uh, whoops. How do I select control? There you go. Yes. I selected my memory card now and I've got Linux installer and Splinter Cell. Both of these you want to copy uh, which you do that by doing something. <laughs> There's a way to copy these. Personalize. Oh wait. Wait. There you go. Okay, it's kind of confusing, this, this interface. But on this menu, if you're going up and down, you've got a little selector if you go right or left. Something like that. If you go to the right one and you press A, then you have an option to copy for some reason that you didn't on the other one. That's why I'm doing this tutorial, because it's really weird and can't. It, it'll take you a lot longer if you don't know what's going on. So you just say, yes, it's copying, hooray, our hack files are getting copied on there. Yay! Cool. You need to do that for both of these files. Yep. Cool. The Splinter Cell one is actually really small because that's just a uh, that is just a fake save file that goes. Oh yeah, points to this Linux installer, and then the Linux installer is what does the majority of that work. Okay. So now we're gonna take out our Splinter Cell copy. Pop that in yonder Xbox. Don't need the memory card anymore. <coughs> Should load up Splinter Cell now, as long as my Xbox is not broken. Yeah, it looks like it's working. You can put away the action replay and everything now. It has done its job. That makes sense. It's just confusing because they're called the same thing. So press start. Skip this. Alright. So we're going to play Splinter Cell. God, I love Splinter Cell. Um, so we're going to go start game. Oh look. There's our, uh, there's our profile already. So yeah, let's load this profile. And I think you do checkpoints and press A. And... This is where the magic happens. Instead of loading into the, the game, we load up this Linux installer. Um, so unleash X. Let me see which 
Okay, so there's two different mods. I think I use Unleash X. Um, I want to get like a visual confirmation. Yes. Unleash X is what we want. Okay, so it's always a good idea to make these backups, which might take a little while. Um, but you never know. If something goes wrong and your in, your mod gets screwed up because you messed around with it in a bad way, there's always an option that you can revert back to the old Xbox if you do this. Yes, Unleash Mega Man, yep. And if you're joining late, um, I'm going to highlight this so you can come, come back and watch it. Uh, in case you do have an old Xbox lying around, uh, I'm going to back this up as well. Because it's a really awesome thing to do. This is the first step, is getting your Xbox modded. And the other step is getting games onto your Xbox which is simple, um, but it's just not, it's not obvious. So once you run through the steps once, it's really easy beyond that. So when am I going to play Center Splinter Cell? I don't really like stealth games. So I gave it a shot at one point, not the Xbox one, the PC version. And, yeah. So you're going to install SoftMod for whichever version you want to do. Yes. Yeah. If you just get an action replay, you're golden. Just run through. Yeah, but then there's like, if you get detected, you fail this mission. And you get detected, and it's like, oh, go back to the beginning. You know. Anyways, that's beyond the point. So we're installing our soft mod here. Oh. and then install Unleash X. Um, I install to whichever has the most space. So we're going to install to E because it shows you your space down there. 4.5 gigs ish. So install to E. Cool. Now, sometimes when you reinstall or when you reset from this point, things can be messed up. But we will see. For now, we're going to say restart Xbox. Oh, see, it came, it came to the screen again. So instead of restarting, I think we want to turn off. Make sure it is turned off. Let's power it back up. I'm opening the this train, so we don't actually want Splinter Cell, because we don't need it anymore. Oh, see, it's still at the screen, and I don't know why. Uh, ah! Maybe we need to do the patch. <clears throat> I don't remember having to do the patch, but... Yes. There's always some uncertainty when going through this process because I space it out so long. Um, but hey, I'm going to troubleshoot on this video and then we'll have it documented. And then you can always. Yeah, it's okay if you break it. You can learn from my mistakes. So, what have we done? We, we backed up everything. We did the soft mod and unleash X. And now we are doing the patch. What's this? Oh, it's patching. And now it's restarting. And now it's back here again. There's something I'm missing. Um, so 
So I didn't see the soft mod go all the way to 100% when it was installing. So I'm going to try restalling it. That might just be a, a glitch though or something. <clears throat> Like the bar seemed to get to like 50% and then stop. It's misleading. I've never touched settings, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to touch settings. Yeah, see, so it just stopped at 50. I think. I think what I've done is fine. It's just that last time I did this, I turned off the console like several times and then it randomly worked. I'm gonna let it sit. I'm gonna unplug the power even in case there's any health memory or anything. Turn it back on. Oh, yeah, see? There we go. So I guess my suggestion would be to do what I did and then turn it off and unplug the power and then plug it back in. And so now when you launch your Xbox, uh, you have this menu here. Um, let me go into my system settings real quick. Okay. So now, our Xbox is successfully modded, and we want to get games onto our Xbox. So what I've already done, because I did it the very first time and never had to do it again, um, I've backed up a, put you in the corner here, okay, I've got this folder with pretty much all the files you need. Um, got my Game Boy emulator, Genesis, Sega Master System, NES, uh, two versions of Super Nintendo, uh, which I believe I do Z Snacks. Z Snacks Box is the one. Uh, let me make sure here. Yeah, that's, that's right. I can probably get rid of this one. Oh, that's why it says no in the front, actually. <laughs> No means no. Don't use this one. Use the other one. I'm gonna put a uh, underscore even in front of it, so so we know that. I've even got the Splinter Cell soft mod back up. Here's the other games that works with Mech Assault and uh, 007 Agent Under Fire, the non Game of the Year editions, because those are patched. But yeah, you can get these files. And then this is actually what you put onto the, the memory card when you go to apply that soft mod. Um, Nintendo 64, Turbo Graphics, Virtual Boy, Super Nintendo, and this is some background music. Anyways, um, that was some custom background music that I put on Hoodie's Xbox. Okay, so, we got all the games, awesome. Now we want them on our Xbox. Um, the way that the transfer system works is like an FTP server, if you've ever used one. Uh, so, what you want to do is hook your Xbox directly to your PC via the Ethernet cable, um, which, if you use an Ethernet cable for your Internet, you will lose Internet for this. Um, I'm using a wireless little dongle, so that will allow me to do both at the same time. Um, so if you have your Xbox hooked up to your PC as such, awesome. There is a program that is free. You can do a free trial, and then once the trial runs out, you can delete it and reinstall it and do the free trial again. This program is called Flash FXP. Oh dear, that's not very, that's not very, uh, detailed. I'll make it smaller here. Oh. And then re-add it. Let's see about that. There, that's better. Okay, 
So this um, on the left here is my computer, uh, which I want to go back actually um, to my E drive, which is where I have my Xbox mod stuff. Doesn't matter where you have your game files and stuff, but here are mine. Um, now, the one thing that you will have to set up and remember where it is in the network settings here, you've got an IP address that is static. This is what you want FXP flash FXP to connect to. So we're going to go to uh, Quick Connect um, over here. <laughs> I'll do this. How about that? There you go. So I've opened up Quick Connect, which is this little lightning bolt right here. And you have to give it some info. So the server that we want to connect to is whatever the IP over here on the Xbox is. So 192.168.0.2. So we'll punch in 192.168.0.2. Awesome. And then it asks for a username and password, which by default with this mod, which is also over here, is down here, Xbox, Xbox. Awesome. So we'll put that in as our username and our password, which is very secret. And that should be it. If we hit connect, the port never changes. The port is always 21. Oh, I did forget one thing, actually. Uh, yeah, this isn't going to work. Stop this. Um, let me go into... Okay. In order to connect to the Xbox, um, your computer needs a specific IP as well. Uh, so what you want to do is go into your network settings like this. This is my Ethernet connection here. Go into your TCP where you can set your, your static IP address. You need to set this to 16801. And the default gateway is 192.168.0.100. Click OK. Yes. OK. Cool. Let it do its thing. It's setting up the network business now. Hopefully I don't lose internet connection. I don't think I should because I'm using the wireless. Okay, so now everything should be set up. It even kept our old settings. Reconnect to one to dot two. Connected. Boom. Now we are in. These are the drives on the Xbox. Huzzah! If you remember when we were setting it up, um, E is the drive that has all that space, all that space. So that's where we're going to put all of our games. C had a little bit of space. That's cool. But E, E is the one that we wanted. So there's a games folder. Pretty straightforward. It says put games here. Uh, we can delete this text file if you want, if you know to put games there. But that's where we're going to want to put games. And uh, from this point on, it's pretty darn easy. Um, let's put our NES emulator on here. So all you do is click and drag. And now it is going to transfer files for a little while. Um, one thing to note is if your games, if the title, the file name of your game is too long, it will fail to place it on there. So if you've got like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, the game, Japanese version, modded, hack, blah, blah, blah. When FXP goes to transfer it, it's going to say, now nah, that file name's too big. And then when you go on your Xbox, you're going to be like, where's my game? It doesn't work. And that's because the file name is too long. So, all you have to do is change the file name, 
call it Mighty Morphin Movie. It's like 64 characters or something like that, so it can be decently long, just not absurdly long. Are you seeing a lot of fails? Yep. Well, that's because, uh, oh cool, it follows us now. Yep, there are a lot of fails, um, but a lot of them, I've I've checked a good chunk of them, and I don't know. They weren't games I really cared about, so there are things that will fail. It is very meticulous to have to go through and change the file names of everything. There are macro scripts that will do it for you, but it, you need to give it a lot of very specific info, and it's... I've never put the time into it. If you want to do it, fine. You can do that on your Xbox, but for me, I'm good with the game list that I get out of this. Do, 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 do. So it's got about a minute and a half left here. Do, 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 do. So over here on my Xbox. You don't need to change any of these settings ever. In fact, don't, because it will it will potentially mess things up. Uh, one thing that is good to do that's different with all these different displays is you go to screen calibration, um, and you can adjust the the bottom and left the well the corners of the screen, which is very good because a lot of the times either this menu or the the actual games will not fit you know exactly as you want them to a or start to save settings cool I never touch video display or anything like that um, and really everything else is pretty good to go you can you can change you can customize a lot of stuff about this um, you can put music on there to listen to you can change the default sound effects for the menus and stuff like that um, but whatever I haven't even explored all of these oh you can stop you can run DVDs on this all sorts of things I just use it for games there's about 10 seconds left on the transfer here I'll let it finish two one and oh I lied. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this takes a little while, but it's definitely worth it, and you only have to do it the one time. So, in the meantime, what have you guys been up to? Sunday morning, yeah. Sunday afternoon, yeah. Oh. working. Oh yeah, you're at work, that's right. File Explorer. Um, if you do want to check how much room you have, uh, you can go into, uh, back out, back out. No, 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 no. Okay, back. On the main menu here, there's a File Explorer. You can check system memory here. Um, because depending on what you put on, you will start to run out of space. Super Nintendo is about one and a half gigs. A lot of Super Nintendo games. But you can go in and, you know, remove any games that you don't want, or add games that are missing. Like by default, I think Metroid 2 is missing off of this. Um, so I put that on for Hoodie. Uh, various games like that. But it uses just the regular ROMs, so nothing special, there's no Xbox specific ROM, anything like that. Oh. So while the slowest program in the world finishes up, yay! Yep, a thousand files failed to transfer. Oops. But, 
go back here. I don't think you have to restart. Yeah, you have to restart. <laughs> so we'll restart. With our foot. Okay. We're on our Xbox screen. We go to games. This is called FCE because it's Famicom emulator, I think. Um, there's a way you can change the name. Uh, not 100% sure where. Probably in the INI file. FCE Ultra is what it's called. But either way, press A on it. We're loading up our emulator. NES for Xbox. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I put this music for Hoodie's Xbox as well. <laughs> Which is awesome, right? This is the best, yeah, this is the best music ever for an emulator. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, hopefully you can hear over the music. I think you can, but just in case. Uh, we we'll go to select game. Um, for whatever reason, it starts off with the D drive, and it you just press A on the D drive. And now you have various folders. The folders are the ones with the carrots, the alligator, less than great, greater than size. Famicom Disk System. These are legitimate Japanese Famicom games. Um, one thing to note with this is there's all these games, but then there's a no intro section for whatever reason that has a bunch of this stuff. And there's some questionable games in here, but you also have like, here's Castlevania, Akumaju, Dracula, and to go back a folder, you just go all the way up, press A on that, back a folder. There are hacks, which there are tons of acid bros. Um, Afro Mario Bros. Lots of just random hacks of games. Yep, most of them are pretty crappy. Here's Ass Climber instead of Ice Climber. Yeah, some of these are not very mature, but anyways. Uh, one thing that you do want to care about is, uh, USA World. This is all the US games that you have placed onto your emulator. So if you hold down the quick scroll, which is R or L, you will see myriads of awesome NES games that you can play. What's up, Seiken? Adventure Island, huh? Every time you start a game for the first time, Whoa, 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 oh, I passed it, didn't I? Actually, I think it's Hudson's Adventure Island, maybe. Or maybe it's not on here. No, it's gotta be on here. Yeah, Hudson's Adventure Island. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, every time you start a game for the first time, you'll press A. It'll come up with this menu. Just don't worry about it, and you press B to exit out of it. Now we're playing Adventure Island. Yoshi's Island is not on the NES version. Um, it's on the, the Super Nintendo, though. We haven't put it on there yet. So for start. And here you go. Now you are playing Adventure Island. Awesome. My favorite game. Um, now you can change a bunch of the controller uh, mapping. Um, you can do turbo and like all this kind of stuff. But what you want to remember is uh by default in order to save state, I think you hold the black button and then you hit left trigger. 
Well, I didn't have to press it that forcefully, but yeah. Black and left trigger is your save state, and then if you want to load state, it's white and left trigger. So, um, it's kind of not an obvious controller keybind, but it makes sense because you don't want to accidentally press it while you're playing a game. This, yeah. Yeah, oh. well, that skateboard sucks anyway. Let me get my, uh... Where is it? Right here? Yeah. Oh no! Well, that sucks. You can also fast forward if you just press, um... If you just press the right trigger. So you stand here, I think. Yes. Yeah, the pineapple, baby! Damn it, snails. Where is it? No, it's right here. Um, there is a tiny bit of lag, at least on, on me right now, with this controller. Oh, it's fire. Fireball. Sweet. Um, where is the... Good old Hudson B that will. Yeah, it's right here. This allows you to continue! Yay! Okay, anyways, to quit out of the game, you push in the right control stick. Go to exit game. Awesome. I think it'll actually save your progress. Oh, it'll just load your previous save state. Never mind. Um. Cool. So we've got our NES set up. We're good to go here. Did I stop the music somehow? Oh, it was just looping. <laughs> um, and, I mean, that's pretty much it. At this point, you've got a modded Xbox. You've put your NES emulator and all the games on there. Um, to plop Super Nintendo games and stuff on there is just the same way. Um, Z Snacks Boss Box. This is our games folder here. Click and drag. <sighs> and so now all the Super Nintendo games are being piled on. So, um, that's pretty much it. That's my tutorial.